Manufacturers distribute toluene diisocyanate, commonly called TDI, in a variety of packages, including rail tank cars. In this section, we will discuss guidance for unloading toluene diisocyanate from rail tank cars, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparation for return. The receiving, handling, and shipment of TDI require compliance with all federal, state, and local regulations concerning hazardous materials. Make sure you know these regulations and follow them at all times. It is recommended that a comprehensive checklist be developed and followed throughout the unloading sequence. Here's one example of a process for consideration. Set the brakes on the rail tank car. Chalk the wheels properly to prevent roll in either direction. And set blue flags used as a warning to prevent access to the unloading area. Outside the U.S., different regulations may apply, so adapt as needed. In the U.S., using derails will meet DOT requirements for access prevention. In most cases, the shipping documents and certificate of analysis will have been sent to your company's receiving office ahead of the rail tank car delivery. Verify the paperwork to validate rail car number, product identification tag, security seal, and that the identity of the material being received is the correct TDI product. Review the values on the certificate of analysis to help ensure that the product meets required specifications. Once all paperwork has been verified, check the tank car itself. Begin by checking the hazard placards. Make sure that they are correct for the product noted on the shipping documents. Outside the U.S., different local regulations may apply. In the U.S., the Department of Transportation, DOT, regulates the transportation of toluene diisocyanate. Although there are various regulations covering the shipment of TDI, it will be typically classified UN 2078 toluene diisocyanate class 6.1 packing group 2. The letters RQ are entered either before or after the description of the shipment when individual packages contain 100 pounds or more of TDI. The toxic placard with the UN marking 2078 displayed is the normal placard for shipments of this material. TDI rail cars must have the required labels or placards applied. The shipping paper must include an emergency contact telephone number that is manned 24 hours a day and appropriate emergency response information. The storage and handling of TDI at your facility may be subject to other federal, state, and local requirements, so adapt processes accordingly. Compare the tank car number against the number identified on the shipping documents. Check the tank car to make sure the numbers on the security seals match the seal numbers shown on the paperwork. Also, confirm that the security seals are not broken and have not been tampered with in any manner. You will need to break the seal on the valve cover hatch, remove the securement pin, and open the hatch to verify product temperature and pad pressure. Carefully remove the closure cap from the thermo well tube. If the car is equipped with a valve on the thermo well tube, carefully open the valve. Insert an appropriate thermometer into the thermo well to determine that the car is at the proper temperature for unloading. In order to avoid contact or exposure to TDI, wear personal protective equipment during hookup and disconnect activities. This includes appropriate impervious clothing such as a chemical protective suit, chemical resistant gloves and boots, as well as an approved full face air supplied respirator. Use fall protection when accessing the top of the rail car. Unloading operators wear personal protective equipment whenever there is a chance of TDI exposure. Verify the location and operation of the nearest eyewash station and safety shower. 
verify that the air inlet valve on the rail car is closed. Then carefully remove the plug and install a fitting that is equipped with a pressure gauge. Ensure the air inlet valve on the bleed valve fitting is closed. Then carefully open the air inlet valve on the rail car to verify the pad pressure on the rail car. Once the paperwork and tank car checks are complete, the next step is to check your own equipment. If the content for the tank car is to be offloaded into a receiving tank, make sure that the tank is the correct one for the product and that there is enough room in the tank to hold the shipment. Clearly identify the unloading connection on the receiving line. Check the unloading hoses before making any connections to either the rail car or receiving line. Transfer hoses for TDI products are typically two inches in diameter to differentiate them from the three inch diameter hoses and fittings generally used for polyol or resin products. Hoses may also be color coded and or labeled to assist in eliminating transfer errors. Because TDI reacts with moisture, it's extremely important that the hoses are dry. If there is any possibility of a problem with a hose, set the hose aside, tag it, and get another hose to complete the transfer. Replace the gasket if necessary and make sure you dispose of the old one properly. Ensure the quick disconnect fittings and gaskets of the hose are in good working order so that the hose can be securely locked onto the discharge valve of the tank car and the receiving line. If there is any possibility of a problem with a hose, set the hose aside, tag it, and get another hose to complete the transfer. All these checks in this example process may seem unnecessary because the operation is routine, but taking these precautions every time will help prevent product contamination and a potential overflow. Tank cars are usually unloaded with nitrogen or dry air pressure. An alternative method would be offloading using a pump while adding nitrogen or dry air to maintain a dry atmosphere within the tank car. When unloading with either of these methods, leading industry practice has all discharge vapors being absorbed or scrubbed free TDI. A closed loop vapor exchange system using a product pump is another means for unloading TDI. Closed loop means that no vapors escape the system into the atmosphere and no moisture from the atmosphere enters the system. If dry air is used for unloading, it's extremely important to check for signs of moisture. Many companies recommend the dew point of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Begin the connection process by checking the nitrogen or dry air source. Make sure the gauge is working properly and that the hose is attached securely. Check the hose gasket for splits or cracks that could prevent a good seal. Verify that the rail tank car discharge valve is closed and carefully remove the plug from this valve. Install the necessary bleed valve fitting into the discharge valve. The next step is to connect the two inch product hose from the rail tank car unloading valve to the receiving tank unloading pipe. Then secure the quick coupler connections. Connect the nitrogen or dry air supply hose to the fitting installed in the air inlet valve. After all connections have been properly secured and the checklist completed, the transfer operation may begin. Carefully open the discharge valve on the rail car. Then open the receiving line valve. The product should now be flowing through the unloading line. Next, open the air inlet valve on the bleed valve fitting, and then open the valve on the nitrogen or dry air source. Once you have verified there are no leaks in the system, the nitrogen or dry air pressure will need to be increased to a typical pressure, usually between 10 to 20 PSIG, depending on the desired rate of unloading. Check with your supplier if higher pressures are desired. Check the pressure gauge to ensure constant pressure is maintained within the rail car until unloading is complete. During the unloading process, operators stay in the area to monitor the transfer of product. The DOT requires that a qualified person attend the unloading operation when the carrier is in attendance. If the carrier leaves the premises, the industry procedure still recommends a qualified person attend the unloading operation. Attend 
means that the person in attendance is alert and has an unobstructed view of the unloading operation during the entire process. A qualified person is properly instructed in unloading procedures, is responsible for compliance with all applicable regulations, is familiar with the nature and properties of the material involved, is instructed in the proper emergency procedures, and in the event of an emergency has the authority and ability to immediately halt the flow of product. Signaling systems that include surveillance equipment such as cameras may be used to notify people within the facility that a problem may exist so that the product flow may be halted immediately. In addition, other safety precautions include no smoking, vaping, or use of tobacco products, no eating or drinking in the area of the transfer process. Monitor the amount of product being transferred at all times. This can be accomplished using an inline flow meter by watching the rail car weight if there is a scale at the loading station, or by monitoring the level rise in the storage tank. Use of two methods of level measurement provides an additional layer of safety and reduces risk of overflow. Don't rely on automatic shutoff systems to stop the unloading process. Such systems are not foolproof. There is absolutely no substitute for an attentive operator. Monitor the operation to ensure that the pad of nitrogen or dry air is maintained in the tank car. Once the tank car has been emptied, disconnect it from the system with the same care as it was connected. First, close the nitrogen or dry air inlet valve on the tank car and shut off the nitrogen or dry air source. Then, close the product discharge valve on the tank car. Wait a suitable amount of time to allow completion of the closure shutoff process, usually about a minute in most cases. Then open the product discharge valve to blow the unloading hose clear to the storage tank. Be careful not to overpressurize the receiving tank during the hose clearing operation. After the hose is cleared, close the product discharge valve on the tank car and the valve on the receiving line. Then open the bleed valve to depressurize the unloading hose. Make sure you collect any excess product in a catch container that contains a neutralizing solution. Now close the bleed valve. Once this has been completed, carefully disconnect the unloading hose from the tank car and if necessary, from the receiving line. Use a catch container under the ends of the hose to capture any product drippage. Apply caps and plugs to the ends of the hose immediately after disconnection. Remove the fitting from the tank car discharge valve and install the closure plug. Recheck to see that the tank car is still pressurized, usually with a minimum 5 to 10 PSIG of nitrogen or dry air. This will help ensure that moisture will not enter the tank car and react with the residual TBI on the return trip. Next, depressurize and carefully disconnect the dry air or nitrogen hose from the tank car's inlet valve. Remove the fitting from the tank car's nitrogen valve and install the closure plug. Finally, remove the thermometer from the thermo well. Close the valve if there is one present and install the closure cap. Check all valves to verify they are fully closed and all closure plugs to verify they are wrench tight. Close the valve cover hatch, install the securement pin, and apply a tamper evidence seal for the return trip. Consult state and local regulations for spilled material. The US DOT also requires that any spilled material or product residue must be removed from the tank car's exterior surface prior to it being offered for return shipment. Complete the checklist to help ensure the rail tank car is properly prepared for return shipment. If there are any defects that must be corrected before the car can be returned or before the car is loaded for the next shipment, notify the supplier. Finally, remove the wheel chocks, 
blue flag, and derail. Return the paperwork to the receiving office, and if there are no defects, notify appropriate personnel that the empty tank car is ready for a return. In this section, we have discussed practices for unloading toluene diisocyanate from rail tank cars, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading, personal protective equipment, connecting, transfer operations, disconnecting, and preparation for return. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, Consult sources including the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry, Guidelines for Diisocyanate Storage Tank Systems, Guidelines for Receiving and Unloading TDI, Unloading Toluene Diisocyanate Rail Cars.